Dr. Kiran and Dr. Prakash from Calicut will be talking about, you know, please tell us what went wrong. Good morning. Am I audible? Yes, Kiran. Yes. I'm Dr. Kiran and uh, Dr. Prakash will be the discussion and we are discussing uh, We are discussing a case of a 61-year-old female with no non-comorbidities, uh, with blurring of vision of right eye more than left eye, and the best correct visual equity in the right eye was 618, and the left eye was 69. And the segment was normal, and the fundus uh, showed diff uh, scattered drusens at the posterior pole, and there was some uh, RP atrophy and confluent drusens in the right eye more than the left eye. And the OCT done showed a uh, subretinal fluid, a uh, fibrovascular PED, uh, with some... Uh, uh, subretinal glucinate deposits in the right eye and the left eye there was no fluid as such. There was uh, bumpy RP, some RP atrophic areas and uh, subretinal glucinate uh, deposits. Uh, we did an autofluorescence which showed a speckled pattern of autofluorescence with a hyper and uh, hypoautofluorescent areas in the central macula in the both the eyes. Uh, uh, we did an FFA which uh, showed uh, a few window defects and uh, mm, uh, a stippled pattern of hyperfluorescence which increased in intensity and the size toward the late stages with uh, staining of the drusens in the right eye and left eye didn't show any leakage. An octa was done uh, which showed a, uh, a vascular membrane under the PED in the right eye. So after establishing a diagnosis of type 1 CNBM in the right eye and dry AMD in the left eye, we decided to start uh, treating her with a uh, monthly uh, ranibizumab injections in the right eye. This is a pre-treatment uh, uh, OCT and the patient had 618 vision and uh, with a, she had a coronal thickness of 186 uh, micrometer and uh, this is the OCT after the first injection. After the first injection, the vision had improved to 612. There was some resolution of the uh, subretinal fluid and uh, we went ahead with the second injection that the vision remained same at 612 and the subretinal fluid also remained the same. And after third injection, the vision had further increased to 6, 9, uh, though there was some uh, subretinal fluid still persisting. And uh, after the fourth injection, though, uh, even though there was not much changes in the OCT demonstrable, the vision had further dropped to 4 by 60. Uh, the, uh, there was no, uh, the IOP remained stable and there was no uh, inflammation during any of these injections. And uh, we gave one more injection and the uh, SRF, completely dried up, uh, but the vision had further dropped to 3 by 60. This is the comparison between the pre-treatment OCT and the OCT after the fifth injection. These are the fundus pictures, but the pre-treatment and after the fifth injection, there, although there is a small area of RP atrophy that has uh, kind of progressed uh, close to the fovea, there was no other significant changes between these two. We repeated the FFA and uh, to look for any macular ischemia or any further progression of the scarring, which is not demonstrable between, uh, there was no considerable difference between these two FFAs taken after the first, fifth injection and uh, pre-treatment. Octa was also repeated and uh, uh, even though the first uh, Octa showed a uh, long dilated uh, filamentary vessels, uh, which, are, which is more of a mature nature and very few final capillaries, there was no significant difference between the Octa pre-treatment and after the fifth injection. Uh, this is the AF. There was no demonstrable uh, um, uh, progression of the RP atrophy in the uh, autofluorescence also. So uh, the six month we didn't inject, we observed the patient and uh, the patient uh, developed some more subretinal fluid and uh, the vision had spontaneously improved from 3 by 60 to 5 by 60. And the seventh month also we didn't inject, we observed the patient and the uh, vision further improved to 6 by 60 in the right eye. And this was the last follow -up. Uh, now I'll uh, hand over the uh, discussion part to Dr. Prakash. Very interesting case, Kiran. A very interesting yeah, case. Yeah. Kiran, can sharing. you? Yeah. yeah. So it's as though some fluid is beneficial for vision. Kiran, you can make it full thank screen. You. I mean, uh, Prakash, you can make it full screen. Yeah, thank you, Gopal, and uh, good morning to all the panelists. Uh, thank you, Kiran. So we had uh, to summarize a patient. Um, yeah. So we had a patient with type 1 neovascular AMD with an SRF only phenotype. 
which means there was no intraretinal fluid, no heme, no exudates, no fibrosis. There was some amount of baseline atrophy. There was a shallow FEPD with overlying fluid. There was a thin choroid. And Okta showed large mature vessels. And this patient received, as per protocol, monthly injections with a sudden drop in vision at a point of time. And once we did a drug withdrawal challenge, there was some improvement in vision. We couldn't exactly pinpoint what was the cause. The only hypothesis we could make was whether it could have been a subclinical worsening of the macular atrophy. So the discussion is basically on macular atrophy in NIMD. And this is a term which has been reserved for uh, atrophy developing in patients with NIMD who has been receiving intravitreal injections. And this is to be differentiated from the normal geographic atrophy, which is seen in dry IMD and which typically has a sharply de demarcated irregular borders, um, uh, whereas this doesn't have that kind of picture. And we have seen from the trials, original Marina Anchor trials, which have been followed up for seven months, seven years, that uh, the macular atrophy severity can worsen over a period of time with continuing injection and can result in vision loss. And in various trials, incidence of macular atrophy has been hurting from uh, CAT trial, which showed 38% at five years, and it has been as high as 62% in some studies. One of the studies with the least amount of macular atrophy at five years, that was 22.5%, was from this study where they had done a treat and extend regimen and they had tolerated some amount of SRF. So that comes us back to this debate. SRF, is it protective? So we feel in the absence of IRF, not all SRF is protective, but in the absence of intraretinal fluid, a purely SRF type subtype of um, CNVM, SRF can be protective. And Catrail all started this argument with its uh, showing that SRF is the absence of SRF, drying of macula is a risk factor for progression of geographic atrophy. So how does SRF work? We can only hypothesize. It can be a barrier which prevents water receptor getting damaged by the toxic effects of CNVM or it could have neuroprotective factors promoting RPE survival. But the most supported theory is that the SRF itself is not protective, but in a patient with thin choroid where the choroid is already compromised, the CNVM vessels in the CNVM, the mature vessels in the type 1 CNVM itself is the support for the uh, um, uh, RPE overlying that as a neurotrophic thing. And the OCT, the SRF is only a biomarker which shows that this, OCT, this uh, type 1 CNVM is supporting the RPE. So this has been substantiated by other studies, basically using OCTA, especially this study by Christian, Christian Burry et al, where they showed that macular atrophy progresses very slowly if there is a fibrovascular PED, shallow fibrovascular PED with a type 1 CNVM inside that. And presence of SRF may be only, when you reach a stage during your treatment where you have only SRF, that could be a good indicator that you have successfully treated the CNVM. And these type 1 CNVM can persist, per, pers, pers, persist in a quiescent, non-infiltrative trophic state below the RPE for a very long time. And again, Nakano et al. showed that comparison of uh, type 1 versus type 2 on Okta, they showed that there is lower vessel junction densities in type 1 which shows that they are more mature vessels compared to the type 2. And this pericyte coverage in these mature vessels might prevent them being getting easily treated by VEGF also. That was also seen in our case because we expect a complete drying with one injection itself in a normal SRF. So this is again, even uh, without a subgroup analysis, uh, the treat and extend study where they have done, I mean, in a fluid study where they have done a treat and extend pattern uh, and tolerated some fluid, they found that tolerating fluid in any uh, CNVM is not way inferior uh, to not tolerating uh, CNVM, I mean SRF. So the take home here is not that you don't treat SRF, you have to treat SRF, but in a certain type of CNVM where SRF is the only phenotype uh, which we see of activity, and the, there is some amount of baseline macular atrophy and the octa is demonstrating mature vessels in a setting of a leptochoroid, a treat and extend regimen where we aim to prevent type 2 conversion only should be ideal rather than completely drying your SRF. Our study definitely had a limitation that we couldn't demonstrate unequivocally macular atrophy as a cause of drop in vision. And we didn't use blue wave water fluorescence, which would have given better the water fluorescence, which uses a poor quality green wave. So, and also if we had better nomogram in mean, uh, lower algorithms for Okta and uh, OCT quantitative analysis, our questions would have been answered. But definitely we would like your opinion from the expert panel as to any other cause you can attribute for this drop in vision or anything else on this subject matter. Thank Thanks you very much, Prakash. Thank you very much. Uh, over to the esteemed panel. Very interesting case. Yeah, so uh, macular it. atrophy, as I understand correctly, would occur after long, long intravitreal injections. This is Here, not macular atrophy. Yeah. See, actually, I have an exact case, and I was just trying to take it out from my own other computer. The difference was, and 
this is the important thing. It uh, did not occur. It, um, well, the case I had also occurred in a patient who had a very shallow kind of RPD with a little bit of fluid. And the patient improved initially from 618 to 69. And then suddenly three days later, the patient's vision dropped to 4 by 60. Now there I was, at least I found a very definite cause. The patient had got a micro rip. And the micro rip actually caused, at that time, no increase in fluid occurred initially. But one month later, the fluid had increased. And then subsequently, whenever the fluid, then fluid, I stopped treating after the first time. And when the fluid went off, the vision dropped. The fluid came back and the vision improved. And there was one more factor that I think occurred here, which I was just going through the, uh, to these slides. See, if the macula, when it settles down, ends up settling on an area that has scarring, the vision will go. That can happen in classic CNVMs also. So even in a classic CNVM, sometimes you'll see the patient, the, if the main part of the CNVM and the, and the foveal center coincide, then sometimes the vision can go once the fluid goes. But you don't have a choice. The question is, did you do something wrong? No, our first attempt is to decrease the to, to, to remove the fluid. If the fluid doesn't go away, then the second thing is to maintain the fluid. The thing is, your fluid went away. Now, in your, so you can't say that I wouldn't try to remove the fluid because then you will end up under treating all your patients. So you can't give a wrong message because of that. This case, this kind of situation happens once in maybe 500,000 cases because I can tell you I have only one such case in all these years. And I do show it as a this thing that sometimes fluid can be good. So yes, you can show it as a factor that sometimes fluid could have a positive role. But in your case, also the same thing is that while the fluid was still there, the vision had already dropped. So so it's not it's not that the fluid went away and the fluid and the vision dropped. It just dropped further when the fluid went away completely. And I think that's what happens when it goes and settles completely onto the to the underlying area, which is abnormal. Then the, the you know the fluid is playing that protective role because it's giving a, a rich nutrients uh, over there. The moment it settles right onto a area which is already atrophic completely, now that can, that that cannot be given. So that's when the fluid the the vision can drop. So this can happen once in a while. And you will see this happening the, uh, once in a while. But this cannot be the rationale for not treating a fluid which is going away. If the fluid Point. doesn't go away, you stable it. Yeah. Point well taken, sir. Dr. Okay. Ajit Babu, any, yeah. any additional uh, comments? There, is, there was a scarring which is uh, growing into the foveal center, if you see the fundus photograph. Yes. That could be one of the reasons for uh, drop in vision. And the fluid, the amount of fluid is very, very minimal here. This amount of fluid requires a close observation rather than re-injections. The third suggestion is RP autofluorescence you should, could have done to see whether there is any active area of atrophy. If that is there, that will be a caution for you to go for re-injections. You observe some kind of a gut before re-injecting very frequently. Yeah. Ajit Babu, you mentioned a very good point because I so saw that, that the fifth, after the fifth injection, you actually have scarring. Yes. I, I don't know if you have the photographs after the third injection because maybe the clue could be if after the third injection, you had found that this was already setting in, then maybe one should have some caution towards giving more injections. Exactly. If you see third injection and fifth injection, the amount of scar has increased. No, if but photograph see. is not there. No, there's no photograph. It is, it is there. He has Understood. given. No, no. He has given some photographs to us, but he has uh, shown serial photographs. Now I. We have a photograph every visit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, so that, so that can give the first clue that there's something wrong happening there. Yeah. Thank okay. You For interest of time, let done, us move on. Uh, good job. These are the two, three things that requires adjustment. That's it. Yeah. Thank you, Ajit. Aishwarya, can you share your presentation?